subscribe follow us on our website www.rfasch.com.ng and uh, this is our website where you can actually uh, see our questions our videos our materials on chemistry physics and biology so follow us on youtube and on our website to get content on biochemistry physics mathematics for both jam colleges and university students and uh, the website is user friendly where you can get information at all level of education so you are all welcome please subscribe to our youtube channel as so many content will be uploaded so in this video we are going to look at nuclear chemistry nuclear chemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of nucleons and of course it includes studying nuclear processes radioactivity and transformation so in nuclear chemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of nucleons so when you said nucleons it means uh, nucleons means nucleus so in the nucleus of the atom as we can see from the diagram the nucleus contain protons and neutrons protons is positive charge and neutrons is neutral so in nuclear chemistry we are studying protons and neutrons and of course in other branches of chemistry like inorganic chemistry organic chemistry physical chemistry they are all associated with the protons so now look sorry electrons so in this uh point we are going to look at the differences between chemical reactions and nuclear reaction so in a chemical reactions generally atoms retain their identity if you have sodium react with chlorine you will have the same thing both on the reactant and the product side but in the case of nuclear reactions atoms usually change from one element to another like for example there is a combustion of one element to another element like uranium undergo nuclear reactions to produce thorium and helium so it means that what you have in the reactant and what you have in the product are different second reactions involve only electrons and usually only autonomous electrons so in normal chemical reactions there are electrons and of course on the outermost electrons that is what we call uh, valence electrons so generally reactions in chemical reactions use that outermost reactions sorry outermost electrons to be involved in the reaction but in the case of nuclear reaction reaction involve mainly the protons and the neutrons so it does not matter what the valence electrons are doing so therefore in nuclear reactions both protons and neutrons are involved in the chemical reactions without involving the valence electrons and the reaction rates in a chemical reaction is affected or can be speed off by rising the temperature concentrations and pressure so concentration pressure and temperature affect normal chemical reaction but in the case of nuclear reaction the reaction rates are unaffected by changes in temperature fridge and concentration energy are, absor are absorbed or given off in the case of normal chemical reaction but reaction sometimes involve enormous changes in energy in the case of nuclear reaction mass is conserved that is the mass of the product is equal to the mass of starting material in the case of normal chemical reaction but in the case of nuclear reaction huge changes huge changes in energy are accompanied by measurable changes in mass where we use the instant equation e is equal to mc square e stands for 
energy m mass and c stand for speed of light so this is actually some of the basic differences between chemical reactions and nuclear reactions so whenever you are dealing with chemical reactions understand what is actually happening and then whenever you are doing actually a nuclear chemistry understand what how the nuclear reactions operate you see uh, like for example in the case of uh first example or first differences you have hydrogen plus oxygen to produce water that is h2o so the hydrogen the amount of hydrogen that are there in the reactant are also there in the product so everything at the same so there is no any change in terms of the element so the element is conserved nothing changed from the reactant to product but in the case of nuclear reactions there are so many conversion uranium breakdown to produce thorium and helium thorium also undergo further changes from the thorium to uh, maybe radium polonium and so many other elements so there is a conversion and electrons they are involved in doing any chemical reaction but in the case of nuclear reaction it doesn't concern with electrons the protons and the neutrons that are found in the uh, of course the nucleus of the atom they are the one that are involved in the reaction like for example in the chemical reaction you can increase the sp speed of the reaction or decrease the speed of the reaction by either increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature or increasing the concentration of any of the reactant or product species like for example in the case of water where you have h2o2 react to produce the water molecule h2 okay so now the next thing is radioactivity Radioactivity is a spontaneous disintegration of radioactive substances to release energy and radiation due to unstable nucleus. So when we said radioactivity, generally when we said spontaneous disintegration, it means self-breaking down of radioactive substances to release energy and radiation without, uh, sorry, with the emission of radiation due to unstable nucleus. So generally in the case of radioactive or oh, in the case of radioactivity there are elements because their nucleus is unstable so on their own because they are unstable they will be breaking down they will be constantly breaking down disintegrating to emit energy radiation and particle due to their unstable nucleus so they will continue breaking down continuously breaking down until when the nucleus become stable and how do we know the stability of the nucleus so whenever you calculate the neutrons to protons ratio of an element if it is above 1.50 that means the element is radioactive like for example in the case of uranium uranium have neutrons to protons ratio of 1.59 so because it is greater than 1.5 that is why uranium is a radioactive element but in the case of sodium when you take sodium the proton is 11 and the neutron is 12 so 12 divided by 11 it will give us one point something like 1.11 so if you have that you see it is not up to 1.5 so anything less than 1.5 that indicate that the element is not radioactive so generally radioactive element undergo self breakdown to emit radiation so now the discoveries of radi in radioactivity the first radioactive substances were discovered by henry becquerel in 1896 so of course radioactive element was discovered accidentally by Henri Becquerel, followed by Ferry Curie and Marie Curie, who 
who actually follow up with the discovery of polonium and radium in the year 1898. It means that after two years of the discovery of radioactivity by uh, Henry Becquerel, the first radioactive element that was discovered by this great scientist Henry Becquerel is uranium in the year 1896 and it was accidentally. He's a photographer using uh, he's using his photographic plates so accidentally one day he kept his photographic plates so when he took it and unfortunately he viewed it he viewed it and he observed that there was a duct that covered the films and that is how he was able to start with the initi initiation of the discovery of radioactivity so he discovered it accidentally so now particles slash radiation emitted by radioactive substances we have alpha particles beta particles and gamma particles so alpha particles is represented as helium with a mass number of four and atomic number of two while beta particles is represented with beta with a mass of zero and atomic number of minus one gamma is represented with gamma with a mass of zero and atomic number of zero so the particle emitted by alpha is helium nucleus while the particles emitted by beta is high speed electron while gamma also emits a high speed photon so usually when a substance undergo alpha decay the mass number of that element decrease by four so any element that undergo alpha decay or alpha emission it means that the mass number of that particular element will decrease by four in the case of beta no change in mass gamma also no change in mass but in the case of atomic number the atomic number decreased by two in the case of alpha particles while increased by one in the case of beta particles and there is no change in mass in the case sorry in atomic number in the case of gamma so what is happening helium nucleus is given off after alpha decay neutron changes to proton in the case of beta decay because there is an increase by one in the case of the atomic number so that is why neutron is changed to protons because protons is hydrogen with atomic number of one but in the case of gamma it accompanies alpha and beta decay so alpha particles is blocked by FIFA it means that it cannot even penetrate into FIFA because it has lower penetrating power beta particles can actually pass through the paper but it can be blocked by a metal like aluminum foil therefore in this case it means that the penetrating power of beta is higher than that of alpha then for gamma it can actually be blocked by or it can block partially by lead and concrete so it means that in terms of the penetrating power gamma particles have higher penetrating power than beta and beta have higher penetrating power than alpha and they also have a properties of ionizing power so in the case of ionizing power of gases alpha have the highest ionizing power on gases while gamma have the least ionizing power on gases while the beta particles is in between so we should understand that these are the three main particles that are emitted by radioactive substances during radioactivity and of course the discovery of radioactivity because this alpha beta and gamma particles have their own medical and industrial applications 
and we are going to look at them one after the one after the other in our next videos that are coming under radioactivity follow us and watch those videos so therefore these particles that we have their equations whenever a particular substance is, you can have a particular uh, a radioactive material that I can undergo al two alpha particles, three alpha particles, or it can emit four alpha particles at the same time or at different time, more than one beta particles and gamma particles at different time with the emission of high energy. So this is very fundamental in understanding the concept of radioactivity interestingly these three particles have often of and unlocked a lot of area in chemistry so let's look at alpha decay so like look at it in the case of alpha decay a radon with a mass number of 236 undergo alpha decay so you see the mass number of radium decrease to 222 and the atomic number decrease from 88 to 82 to 86 and of course helium is emitted with high amount of energy so this is a typical example of alpha decay then the beta decay in the case of beta decay you see we have x changed to y that is why we said in case of uh, radioactivity, generally there is a combustion of one element to another from reactant to product. So you see here the atomic number is increased by one from Z to Z plus one. And of course we have our beta. So this is actually a beta decay. The mass number doesn't change, but the atomic number increased by one. Then the next one is 